other things too, but this is, it's amazing to me how the computer experimentation yeah. has so much success in things that I wanted to know about. Yeah. And I guess I should, you know, pause just to, you know, make sure we've got a philosophy going on here. So far, we we see one use, just pure experimentation. But but it's just is you know, almost experimentation for the sake of doing experimentation. We 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 we, we come up with, with these new conjectures. Wonderful. It's not helping with the proof, you know. But we haven't had help with the proof so far. But it's just about experimentation. Is the Andrews pursuit identity is an realization of the order of mantra? Uh, it, it is. So. So Gordon generalizes Rogers homologism, and Gordon applies for all uh, odd modulus, all odd moduli. This is the even moduli counterpart. So, 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 so I guess in some sense it is a not quite a generalization, but like an uncle. But these are like Euler in a certain sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the experimentation within the Euler is Ooh, uh, that that is going that that would be an interesting because I will be talking about integer matrices uh, uh, coming experimentation coming up in, in, in the last third of this talk. Uh, I, I I'm not sure how to how to tie that in with with, with partition, but but that's an interesting thought. But yeah, so so, so we've seen experimentation for the sake of experimentation. We've seen experimentation to guide to wake up and say, hey, look. This, this shows us how to proceed with our proof. This is the right definition to make our motivated proof go through. And then um, for, for, for the rest of this, um, so some more proof guiding, also automated proofing. And so I'll talk about sequences, um, both uh, integer sequences, uh, and also some, some sequences of non-commutative variables. So uh, SOMOS sequences, uh, Michael SOMOS has been uh, he's not here today, but he's been a frequent visitor at our seminar in the past semester. So, so it's four sequence. Um, you start off with one, 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 one as your first four terms, and then for all your terms afterwards, a sub n is so multiply one back times the term three back, uh, add on the term that's two back squared, and divide that by the term that's four back. This clearly gives you. Uh, gives you some sort of sequence of rational numbers, uh, but the surprising thing is, is that this only gives you integers, so OAIS uh, 6720. And so, and, and so that is quite surprising, and, and the proof is, it, it is doable, but not instantly obvious. Um, you can also, so, so, so you can kind of look at this as some sort of polynomial up here, like this is x sub 1 times x sub 3 plus x sub 2 squared, we can change the polynomial on top. Uh, and so Dana Scott discovered that this sequence right here, same initial conditions, same thing, except that somehow that exponent is gone. Uh, and, and he discovered by accident that this, was, that this was also an integer sequence. He was trying to study this, just type this into whatever uh, computer program. He made a typo, he forgot the, to square it. So being a bad typist. Yes, yes, so, and, and it's, it's, it's kind of interesting because like, like so often and, and like other, you know, the, this is a nice example of mathematics being experimental science. But, you know, so, you know, you know, come up with, with how many different examples you've seen in other sciences where you know oop, you mix two chemicals together in the wrong way and something good happens. <laughs> you know, that, that, you know, but this is the one example I know of it in math where you, you you do something wrong and we end up with a new discovery here. Um, so 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 again, this generates only integers. This contains both linear and quadratic terms. Uh, and, and so uh, these are actually the previous ones. They get they got kind of proved by ad hoc methods. Tefel and Zalvinsky came up with a way to, uh, with a very big, uh, very good uh, machinery to, to to do this. So they used formal variables a one, a two, up to a k as initial data. Um, and so we say that a sequence is the Laurent phenomenon if each of the terms in your sequence ends up being a Laurent polynomial at a1 through a, a sub k. And so the, the point here is that it has to be a Laurent polynomial because we're going to be dividing by some terms. But the, but the more important thing is that 
we're eventually we're going to be dividing by polynomials. And so somehow what we have on top always has a factor to cancel out, you know, the uh, everything that's not just uh, monomials on the bottom. So it's not too hard to see that the roughness of a sequence implies integrality of the corresponding sequence with all ones in the data, just and, you know, set everything equal to one. And so they, they, they end up with, uh, Fomin and Zelovinsky have some pretty uh, high power machinery. I, I, I'm omitting it because it's kind of technical for, for, for a 48 minute thesis defense. Um, and and, and, and so the, the, the neat thing is that it, it turns out to be very, uh, so, so, so as I said, we, we can either look at integrality or we can look at the roughness, depending on whether we want ones or formal variables as our initial data. Uh, they, they give sufficient conditions. And, 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 then the, and the point here is that these conditions I'm leaving out are very automatable. It's, real, it's not all that bad to teach it to maple. And, and so the thing is, is that uh, I, I worked on a project where um, the discovery process was basically, um, I, I looked at lots of quadratic recurrences with, for, for, for lots of, so, so, so not just uh, before we saw quadratic recurrences on, uh, I guess, uh, so, 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 so our, the numerator was essentially a polynomial in three variables. That was, that, that was quadratic, and, I, and so I said, okay, what happens if we go out to four variables, five variables, six variables, so on and so forth, and look at lots of different uh, recurrences. And so coefficients I always set equal to zero, one for simplicity's sake. Wait, is your f the numerator? Yeah, f is, yes, yeah, thanks, thanks for, for asking. Yeah, f, f is the numerator. Um, I guess going back to the original SOMOS one, so that was the a sub n minus 1 times a sub n minus 3. I would just write as x sub 1 times x sub 3. Uh, so, so I would search all possible polynomials f of this form for small values of the number of terms I'm going back. Um, and I can, for any given f, I can just calculate, you know, it is really easy. This is, so, so, so no, this here is experimentation, just like in partition when I was discovering the partition identities, I just calculate out a bunch of terms and, and, and see if everything works out. I can do the same thing here. Come up with a polynomial, calculate out a bunch of terms of the sequence, and then ask, is it still in the, in the, in the girl? If, if it is, oh look, it's a candidate. If not, okay, we move on to the next, you know. We, we, we move on to the next one. We, we first compute it with, with integers because Maple is going to handle integer calculation much, 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 much faster than, than it would for you know, formal variables. And so if we have something like, hey, look, it looks like it's, it's all integers so far, then we can actually sit down and tap the computer and then run through checking the fulton Zelovinsky criteria. And so putting all this together, we have, we have, this is kind of like the next level up. We can, we can experiment, we can experiment to have a guide proof, but in this case, we are experimenting to conjecture and then we're, without doing any more work other than the coding, the computer automatically proves it as well. And so that's kind of cool. Uh, so, so it gives an automated proof in special cases. Once again, it can, it can uh, outline general proofs for infinite families of polynomials, and it rediscovers many known families with, with the rough phenomenon. And so, uh, in the last uh, eight or nine minutes of my talk, I'm just going to talk about the non-commutative versions here. So, now we're switching over uh, from, from uh, in, instead of st always starting off with with, uh, with, with very, you know, formal variables, we're now enforcing that these are uh, not commutative. And so, uh, Kuntzevich uh, uh, defined a map to, uh, here, the automorphism of a plane, so x, x, y gets mapped to that ordered pair. And he conjectured that um, if you, so here, one plus y to the r, and so if, if, we, if you pick any R1, R2, and any two uh, positive integers you want, and then 
just apply this map to x, y in turn, just switch off between r1 and r2 and over and over again, you always end up with uh, non-commutative neuron polynomials in your initial data. And so this is, this is essentially a non-commutative analog of the Laurent phenomenon. So we can kind of re rework this this map. Um, well, well, first I should note that special cases were proved by various groups of Usnich and Di Francesco and Kadim. Uh, in some of those special cases, instead of just looking at one plus y to the r, they took a, a monic palindrome polynomial proof by example here, uh, or sorry, definition by example. So you want it to. The, the constant term and the lean coefficient to both be one, and everything else has to be symmetric. So, so, the co so y to the one and y <coughs> to the six minus one both have threes as their uh, coefficient there. And so, full the, the, the full Kentsevich conjectures were, were, were proved in, in various ways by Berenstein and Rettach, and then also by uh, Dylan Ruppel. And so one way that we can kind of rework things is that uh, it, it turns out that, that this reworking is equivalent to the Kuntzevich map. And it's a little bit easier to understand instead of having a sequence of ordered pairs, we're only working with a sequence of, of, of uh, a, essentially a single sequence of, of these non-commutative polynomials. And this is, this is the method that used by Berenstein and Rettach. And so, what, so, so I ended up trying to, uh, to uh, generalize this, and the, there, there's, a, there's a lot of technical stuff on this slide that I, I, I put, because I probably should put it in, in the talk, but the, but the basic principle is, is, that, is that we are, now instead of having just two initial variables, we have k initial variables. And then also, and, uh, and then we have the appropriate number of relations as well. And so there ends up being, uh, you can take instead of, again, instead of taking two monopalindrome polynomials, you can choose n different, as many, uh, you know, so, so the same. So here, yeah, um, I think that that k should be the n there. They, those should be the same. Yeah. And then here is our recursive definition of, of uh, y sub n. It is by plugging in the previous variables into our mod palindromic polynomial. Note that this is mod palindromic polynomial, so it's a polynomial of a single variable. So you're plugging in all of that, that entire thing multiplied together. And so what we're going to proving was the sequence also has a non commutative neuron phenomenon. So that's the, that's the theorem, but you know, once again I want to touch on experimental mathematics. Um, there's actually a, 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 a kind of clever uh, way to, to, to explore, um, uh, explore these non-commutative recursions using computers. So, so before, uh, when I was doing the commutative stuff, I would just set, you know, one, 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 one was our initial data. And then I could, you know, calculate a bunch of terms. I still get integers. Wonderful. For these, the, the, the trick was instead of using variable, instead of using one one one, I used uh, my, my initial conditions were uh, matrices and SL two Z. So matrix, so two by two matrices, integer coefficients or integer entries determine one. And I remember thinking to my new, but like like ah. These, these matrices are basically integers that don't commute. At, at least the, that's, the, that's the way that I was using them in this. And so the, the, the same process basically, I, this replaces the, the all ones initial condition in the uh, commutative case. So instead of um, just, just looking at, now, now I'm calculating out all of these, the sequence of two by two matrices, if, if the you know, if I keep getting matrices with integer entries. That's that's great. If I get some place in which in which I am, you know, so, so, so of course it, it, it's not proof sort of thing. It just gives me a very good evidence. Uh, but if I start dividing out by stuff, that's a red flag. That's because I'm dividing by some matrix, 
you know, are, well, identify, you multiply the inverse of some matrix, and that matrix did not have, has determinant not equal to plus or minus one. And that's what happens. And so, uh, I guess, I, I, I would just kind of note to say that there are some leftover, uh, I don't think I, I put this in, but there's a, there's a couple of leftover uh, ones that I was not able to prove, but do have very good numerical evidence for it. Um, oh yeah, so, so proof sketch is just a long uh, calculation. Once again, the computer helped me guide this. I, I, I wrote some computer code, that I, I, I stole some of Dr. Z's computer code and, and, and added some stuff to it. And, and then the point is, it can actually work, prove, automatically prove in special cases. If I stare at its proof in special cases long enough, I can hopefully figure out what's going on in the more general case. Um, and and it, it's just a long series of, of man, man, manipulations that honestly isn't all that. But the, the proof itself isn't all that interesting. It's, it, it's very much manipulatorics. Um, <laughs> Uh, I would just end, and yep, uh, I, I would just end, end by saying that I, uh, I also uh, looked at some two-dimensional recurrences as, as, as well. Um, so once again, there are some commutative uh, two-dimensional recurrences, and I, I, I managed to put in some work on on, on, on the commutative two-dimensional recurrences that have the rock phenomenon. I actually, and I put in a little bit of work on uh, on looking at non-commutative case for this as well. Okay, uh, I think that is all I have to say, so thank you. Any questions by the general audience? Go ahead. Uh, what percentage of your thesis is computer code? <laughs> um, so, so I, I mean, if, if you look at the, the, the actual physical, like there's no computer code in it, uh, but like there's references to stuff like I posted on my website. If you compare the length of that to the length of the written piece, <laughs> I, 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 I'm actually going to, going to say it's probably not as much as you would think. So, the 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 programs I write tend to be on the shorter side. So, yeah, it should be emphasized that the ghost theory story. Yes. We, uh, there's a four author paper. Yes. And you, yes, I I, I should have I, I, I should have more emphasized. But that's yes. that's pure math. And yes. your and Shushank's idea that we're with your maple code gave us, it, it unstuck us in the pure myth. Yes. I mean, you know, in the, in the mm -hmm. official proof, proving things. Mm -hmm. So that, that the, the app, from my point of view, it's all proved. And there's this amazing experimentation that unstuck us. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's math, not maple. <laughs> <laughs> but maple. Can you talk a little bit about where um, these series arise, like in nature, in particular your conjectural ones? Yeah. So, so the um, the, the 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 nine partition identities, three of them have symmetric uh, sum sides, and so if you go into uh, vertex upper algebra land, those are that's a very strong hint that they correspond to some affine in the algebras. And so, and so those, the, the first three, the ones with the symmetric um, product sides, almost assuredly uh, are connected with, uh, with, with, with D43, the affine the algebra, in, in, in some way. However, the, the other ones, the, the, the rest of the six, have asymmetric sum sides. And so we should not expect um, uh, for text operator theoretic interpretations, there, uh, there, there are. You know, I, I can show you how, how these do like these do look like some other partition identities that have been known. But yeah, um, Neil, I have a question. Yeah. Um, you say you put the maple code and the mathematical code on your homepage, but I wish you would put it somewhere where it will survive <laughs> yes. even after your homepage. Can you put it on the archive or? In the library somewhere, oh, that's a, so it has a permanent. That's because that's, if it's just going to disappear, and no one will be able to verify what you did. Yeah, that's that. But that, that, that archive is, is also on the web. It's also an internet thing. That, well, that, some things are more personal. Home pages disappear all the time. That that is a very good thought, and I will have yeah, to think more about. Yeah, for Cordia GitHub. Okay. Yeah, I, I I will have to to, to check it's out. It's really that. important. Yeah. Okay. 
I, I will certainly look into that. Um, for the pairs of partition identities that you have, if you have, if you're able to find a uh, pure mathematical proof for one, does uh -huh. that maybe imply or like will the same proof apply? Do you know anything about I, that? I, I would suspect that that like the pairs should be of essentially exactly the same difficulty level. Okay. That I I don't know if you prove you might prove be able to prove that at the same time or it might just be that like oh look you copy paste the proof and make a handful of changes. Yeah. Are, are there any matching proofs? Uh, bijective proofs. Those are uh, those are so, so, so there there is a bijective proof of Euler the odd equals distinct one. There is a really, 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 really complicated bijective <laughs> proof of Rogers Romanov. It's not fully bijective. Right, yeah, and then. It the, is bijective, but it's not the sense of the real yeah, and, and, and I don't really know of other. So, 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 so attempting to prove our, our conjecture by bijection would be <laughs> hopeless, let, let's be honest. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Nathan? Do you, have, do you have a sense of whether some of your identities would be harder than others, or do they all just seem about as hard as each other, do you think? Uh, I, I will kind of, def uh, so, 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 so I think that, that some intuition should be that the first three uh, we should be gettable eventually. Like, but, like people haven't, but like the, 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 the vertex operator theoretic approaches haven't really been, those, are, those would take a while to do, nobody's really sat down to try them, but they would have a decent chance of working. The, the other mod nine ones, people have looked at a lot, nobody's got them, and I really don't have any clue how you go about the mod 12 ones. So that, that is my difficulty level. Yeah, Brock? Okay, uh, this is not important for results, but I'm just curious because, because like, you have these codes, like what's the computational complexity of the algorithms you're using the test in general? Like are these supposed to take up like super oh. are you using super computers test oh. things or I, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm just using like desktops and, and, and you know the math offices and and I and I, I don't really I, 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 so, you know, sorry to all computer science either. I don't really care about you know complexity. I just like do, you know, do, will this go fast enough? Great. If not I should try something else. <laughs> Does the brothers have some kind of Supercomputer that you can borrow or use. Yeah, and, and, and that is certainly one uh, thing on a to do. You know, you know, on a to do list, maybe even the somewhere in the RU is that's, to. That's another. That was another one of my ideas. Yes. We're going to be working on yes. this in RU this summer. Yeah. We have to find somebody with a supercomputer. Yes. Uh, this time to follow up. Okay. Can I, can I say one more quick yeah. thing? <laughs> I, I, some, some of us were large number theory conference in Gainesville, Florida recently. And many <laughs> people in, from all over the world, you know, many places, independently told me they were trying hard to prove oh. your and Shoshone Kanona's conjectures. <laughs> <laughs> and so far they failed. <laughs> they failed. So far they failed. Yeah. Not successfully. They failed. Right, but it, they're widely being worked on. Does this end the topic part? Only everybody has to leave except the committee and the candidate. <laughs>